I want to thank God for Pastor Mike. Of course, with your wife. No, that you have put together this meeting in only three days. Let's applause them. These days, Pastor Mike got a promotion at his workplace, so sometime you call him. And he doesn't pick, so sometimes you feel like, is he... But you say praise the Lord. But Pastor Mike and the team have managed to put this together. The ministers here. I think this is our first, if not the second. Pastor Tony, which one is this one? Is it the first or the second? It is the first. So we are grateful for you, Pastor Mike, and your team. Thank you so much, my wife, for inviting me in such a glamorous way. You did good. I want to thank God for Mr. Steve Nkaluvo. I don't know where he is. I think he's in Dozafunya Simokuvo. But we thank God for you. What if I tell you that the pastors of Wonders Christian Center are here? Pastor Maria is in the house. Pastor Audrey is in the house. Pastor Barbara and their husbands. Unique Maggie is the pastor in the making. She is here also. Unique Maggie na yemu sumbali mukutende kebwa na yewo aliwano. My Mukalas is in the house. My Mukalas who are in Nyumba. And uh, who else have I not introduced? Pastor Tony is in the house. Simba Tony is in Kugawali. Now long Rebecca Kepler has been seated somewhere. Now long Rebecca had the cow and I had a cow from him. Let's applause them as well. Kayemba Ebel and the wife there in the house. Pastor Fred in Subuga. No, Sumba Fred in Subuga. And I am a little Baraka or team calls Pastor Subuga, Musumba Munsubuga. So. You are welcome, Sebo. My other friend, like Pastor Fred in Subaga, Pastor Reverend Isaac Macheri. Everyone should meet an Isaac Macharia in their heart, in their lives. Mr. Steve. Listen to me, all of you. I did not invite Ms. Pastor Isaac Macharia. Just check my WhatsApp status. And then today, he just walked in. Nadia. Thank you so much, Ms. Sumba. Why don't you come and say hello in just five minutes? If I have 35, I've Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle. Uh, for the invite. You see, when you put something on social media, you've already invited people. It's the power of social media. Uh, 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 Apostle has been to our church. We, we lead uh, our, our church is a very youthful church. Uh, we, we have taught them on the power of social media. Before people come to your space, they check you out online. So, so the more you have online, the better. And your church, you have a very resourceful church. 
I keep seeing a lot of posters and a lot of links being shared. That, that, is a, that is a free resource of inviting people. Just put it on your status. Somebody, somebody, somebody will see it. Who is very far. But know somebody who is near. This, this is happening just a few meters from where you are. And then the person comes and when they come here, they wonder how can I have been living around here and I don't know these people. So, so thank you. I would not have known if you that would not have posted it. Uh, my, wife, my wife knows I'm here. And we have been told it is good to communicate. Um, yeah, but she was attending a prayer conference somewhere. But she knows I am here. Amen. I am learning. I am also learning. I've been married 13 years. Uh, but, but with marriage, there is no, there is no overgraduating. And so I am here to learn. And I'm, and I'm grateful for the opportunity. My prayer for you is that you would know that marriage is a power, a, 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 a functional, a good marriage. Is a, is, a power, is a powerful force. Hallelujah. Amen. Before God created the church, he created marriage. That's, that's what you encounter in Genesis, early in Genesis. He is the, he is the author of marriages. And he is intention and, and, and purposes that our marriages would work out. So I pray that we will take a posture of, hum of humility as we, as we receive from the various people that God has prepared. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Let us clap our hands for Pastor Macharia. Pastor Isaac Macharia has wrote a book. Isaac Macharia Mandate. Edimo. Mandate. Mandate. Edimo. And I, uh, we, we are going to plan that you come back and talk to the We are going to plan and you come and talk to the men. How many of you are ready for me? I'm psychologically trying to count how much time I have. Because the marriage apostle of Pastor Fred in Subuga is in the house. Uh, I'll begin by telling you I and Violet have been married for 16 years. Pastor Tony was present when we were going when I was going to pay the dollar price. As a ministry, we go big on marriage. And I really encourage people to stick around with their husbands and wives. And I must tell you that there are no women that are angels. All women are women. You may pick some romantic words like she's an angel. We, we, we just work our marriage. Mm. Tell your neighbor we work out our marriages. One of these, I think one month or two or three or four, five months back, I called one of the ministers, she's here. I gave her some good wisdom. I told her that from this week, begin to call your husband. When, when he comes back home, why are you not looking at me? So when your husband comes home, call him, hey, my king. Welcome home. 
So a week later, this person calls me. And then the person said, Apostle Chija Kola. Let me talk to this table. I'm a table is it's like you're holding out on me. Like, let me tell you. You need someone who can give you wisdom on how to get better. Even in your marriage. So today, Pastor Mike organized us. Apostle Nsubuka, Apostle Abbe Collins, that we will talk to you that our marriages should get better. Someone say amen. Someone say amen. My task is so simple. I'm not going to talk for long. I just want to use only 30 minutes because we should go and do dinner and then probably come back. I was given a responsibility of raise, talking about raising godly children. Raising, raising godly children. I will begin with strong words. You don't raise children by chance. You don't raise children by chance. Even cassava doesn't grow by chance. You, when you look behind there, there is what we call eucalyptus. Someone must have planted them. Hey, Anita, I did not greet you. Thank you so much. You've been sick for two weeks. You did not tell us what the sickness, but we thank God you are back. So, any Anything that is going to grow, there is deliberate work to eat. What if I tell you, church? Our children are the next big thing in Uganda. Let me say it again. Our children are the next big thing in Uganda. Uganda. Let me say it again. If I was talking to the Nigerian, Oh, okay. If I was talking to Wanda's Christian Center, and then people oh, here, they would clap their hands. But let me say it again. Our children, your children, your grandchildren, our children are the next big thing in Uganda. It is estimated over 1.4 million children are born in Uganda every year. And it is estimated that out of the 48 million Ugandans, we have 21 million children that you and I must be deliberate to teach, to train, to speak to because we do not want them to function disorderly as we grew up functioning disorderly. Truly, so it is going to take a lot of work. And it takes men and women. Someone say it takes men and women. There are three things that we should be deliberate to teach our children. You know why I'm talking so fast? Because time is not for me. It is against me. What if I tell you it takes a village to raise children. That is your uncle, your auntie, the mothers, the fathers, all of us are going to raise a godly children. The number one problem of Uganda is not corruption. Why you not looking at me? It's not corruption. It is family. Maka. It is family. Maka. 
When the family is settled, the nation will be settled. When the nation is settled, Africa will be settled. Let me put it this way. When the family is settled, even the church will be settled. I know you don't want to clap your hands. It's like saying, hey, I can't remember from the name of the Sunday service. Now yeah. teaching like it's a Sunday service. What you do? Kona kuna Amba we chidi. When the family is settled, the church will be settled. When the family is settled, the nation will be settled. What if I tell you? Atashinga mbagamba. If a child is coming from a functional family, chances are themselves they will replicate a functional family. Someone say, ah, okay. Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter one verses five. Let us start from there. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, I am persuaded that the same faith is in you also. So, Anita, what do you say? Pastor, what do you say? 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 What do you Chapter 2. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 2. Okay. Second Timothy chapter 1. Verse 5. Yes. When Najukiziwa. Okukirizok Talikwa Bukusa. Okuri Mugwe. Okwabe Rango Vedeveri Mujaja Oloi. Nemu Nyoko Eunike. Era ntegele de dalanga kuli ne mugwe. Mm. Chenvanku jukiza okuse sange chidabo cha katonda. Mm. E chidi mugwe. Urokte kebuwa ke mikono jange. Now look at me friends. There are three, there are two outstanding women here. Walu wawa chala wengkizo wa satu wana. The grandmother. Jajia. And the mother. Ne mama. Now this is Paul. Katono Paul. He's talking to Timothy. Alikuogira gaza nini Timothy. Let me. Make a simple illustration here. Someone to volunteer like a grandmother. Lois. And the mother. Eunice. So these women cannot sacrifice. Eh? You can imagine what pastors go through. Eh? Pastor Audrey, you can come. Pastor Audrey, just come. Let me make my. You see? Some people can frustrate an illustration, eh? Okay, come here. Give it that one. Okay. Nero, grandmother, you have a grandmother. A good grandmother. Cut Barbara Dawari. Okay. Cut Funeo. To Funeo Timothy. Let's get a turn. Oh, love it. You might have a disciple. Ayayi Muki Dawada. Come here. Okay. Now. Kati. Let us read the scripture again. Katudem to Sameo. Soma. Mm -hmm. Yangwa. Second Timothy two verses five. Mm -hmm. Chapter one verses five. When I call to remember the genuine faith that is in you. Now when this is Timothy. On a tem seo. Hmm? Django Djangueno. Djangueno. On a Timothy. So Paul is saying that this one has got genuine faith. Are you looking at me? 
Remember, we are talking about raising godly children. Now, listen to me. Listen to me godly children are not born to they are raised. We grew up in a, a theogenetic, rather, like a community where we are. There are many forces that are contending against our lives. So now Paul is saying, Timothy, when I look at you, there is genuine faith. But Faith first existed in your grandmother. Loy. Loy. He was a light. And then he goes on to say that same faith moves in your mother. Eunice. Eunice. She used to plait her hair like that. Now, when you look at Timothy, the faith in Timothy, the excitement in Timothy, the love in Timothy, it is a contribution, not an accident, that the grandmother passed it on to the mother, and the mother passed it on to the son. Now, the assignment that we have as parents, what you transmit, what you pass on to your children, matters a lot. Let's clap our hands for them. Illustration, would you take it? Let me hope you've what my you analogy. transmit to your children matters a lot. Out of the 21 million children, it is the call of parents to mind about their children. Because what we teach to our children matters a lot. Luke chapter 2, 41. As I am trying to wind up. Luke chapter 21, 41. Are there, Anita? Jesus, now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, when he was what? When he was what? You know, some of you parents, when you come to church, you come by yourself. When he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the children, Jesus, started behind. The child Jesus started behind in Jerusalem. Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey and they sought him among their kinsfolk. They also sought him amongst, they sought him amongst the acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem. Now please pay attention to this one. Seeking him and it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple. Look at me parents. And those of you are planning to be parents. And those of you are parents. Listen to me. When your children disappear from you, where do you find them? Where do you find your children when they are out of your sight? What is the response from them? When the children are not home, where do you find them? 
Can we mention some of the places we will find them? Is it true? You, you can find them in a disco. You will find them in the gym. But the parents of Jesus, they found him in the temple. There are five things that I put up together for our conception. How you can raise your children. How we can raise our children. Number one, we should be mindful where our kids sit. Who they sit before. Hmm. Hmm. I like that one. Where your kids sit. Who they sit with. What they are talking. Matters a lot. The teachers will teach our children. The friends will take advantage of our children. But parents will parent our children. Jesus was found sitting in the midst of the doctors. Like some of you are not even saying anything. My children, I know where they are sitting. Where do your children sit? Where do our kids sit? It matters a lot. Because you don't say with them where they associate but with those with them. Point number two. Who they hear from. What are they hearing? Do you take time to sit with your children? Do you get time? Tough conversation. Do you, do you get time to sit with your children? And you hear them. And they tell you stories. Point number three. What kind of questions do your children ask you? What kind of conversation do you have? What kind of questions do they relate to when you? When Jesus was before the doctor, he was asking them questions. Parents, you don't want to speak. You're just gazing at me. Tap your elbow neighbor and ask them, what kind of questions do your children ask you? Twelve years old. Previously, when I went to pick up my wife from the airport, I went me and Abigail and Israel. When we reached there to pick up Violet, as we were trekking, Israel was like, told the mother, but mother, stop leaving that behind. He's just a fool. What kind of questions do your children ask? Hmm. May I prepared my questions mm. and you should all ponder on them. Point number four. The Bible says Bible they heard him and they were astonished. Here is a question. Do your kids astonish the people in your community? Yeah. Are you jotting down? You're here or you're not here? Are we together? Everyone that heard him, they were astonished at his understanding and the answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why have you dealt with us? 
Behold, your father and I sought for you sorrowing. And Jesus said unto them, How is it that you sought for me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Friends, as I come to the conclusion, it is not enough as parents, when we go to labor, let me come to you. It's not enough when we go to labor. But businessmen are about to do it. For us who are constructors, government. It's not enough. Okubanga business kategori. But it's not enough. If Rodrela is equal, the business you are doing. Okay, you wake up at dawn and then you come back in the night with your luggage. You you come back, daddy. But you don't know what you're doing. I know some of you are so convinced. You think you're going to stay longer for 120 years. That is your faith. It is well. Here is the wisdom. Take time off from your busy schedule. Sit down with your children. You tell them I'm your father. I am your mother. In your business, this is what I do. And this is where I get my money from. This is where I get my money from. The children do not know your ways of work. Tap your elbow and tell them to share with them what you do. Sit them down and share with them what you do. I told my children. I'm like I have a shop for boys. Twenty and ten and thirty. I even tell them there's a season where we sell, and then there are seasons when we're out of season. Ne business and another business. When I happen to get out and of season, and then I go to business. And even tell them that I'm going to pastor see pastor Machari. Pastor when I come back, I'm like, Pastor Nsubuga has given me an empty. And now you're going to go to school. Amen. Mm. Tap your elbow neighbor and tell them business your children so should know your concerns. And as I conclude, this is one of the powerful statements that was said by T.D. Jakes. He said, it is not what you leave to your children that matters. But it's what you live in them. That, that is what is going to change it is what generations. we live in our children. Parents, I must tell you. I am raising my children. Look at I am raising my children. Please raise your children. Hey! I am raising my children. Because as you're raising your children, I have no idea what my children, where they will go. I want my children when they are these are the words that they speak about. Our parents serve the Lord. Our parents work for them. Even your parents said that they get words that they will speak out. Did they tell you when you are not supposed to clap your hands in this conference? You are not supposed to slap your hands. Amen. Amen. It gives me so much joy. The other day, the other day, 
I had gone to see Pastor Robert Kayanja. I have a small conversation. I had gone with Violet. Violet. Moving with my wife, I got it from two people. I will not share one, but I can share it. As we were there, after seeing him, as we were there, the person raised me, they're like, there's a card here. A card that was inviting us for a wedding. Whose wedding? Junior Junior Robert Kayanja. And as I was leaving the place, I called Pastor Nsubuga. I've been invited at Robert Kayanja's wedding. I told my wife, I'm like, this card, we should keep it. For our children to one day see it. What is that that you're preparing for your children to see in the future? We attended the wedding, I and my wife. We took our snapshots. 